Hi, everyone, and welcome. I'm Patricia Capella, Conference Manager with Clarion Events. Thank you so much for joining us today for our exciting and informative webcast series, Tribal Gaming and the New Normal with Victor Rocha, focusing on sports betting today. Before I introduce Victor, I would like to go over some housekeeping items to keep in mind. All audience members are on listen-only mode, which means you are muted. We will be monitoring audience engagement on the dashboard and do encourage you to participate by using the question pane. There will be time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. We are recording this webinar and you will receive an email with a copy of the recording so that you may listen to and refer back to this at any time. This webinar, as well as others in our series, will also be made available on our website, IndianGamingTradeShow.com, under the Education tab in the coming week. Now, without further delay, let me introduce Victor, Conference Chairman with the National Indian Gaming Association and editor of Pachanga.net. Victor, take it away. Thank you, Patty. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, good afternoon. My name is Victor Rocha, and this is The New Normal. Uh, in today's conversation, we'll be discussing sports betting in California from the tribal perspective. But before I begin, let me give you some context. Uh, tomorrow, the Senate Appropriations Committee in the California Legislature will vote on Bill uh, SCA 6. That's a sports wagering constitutional amendment. This bill will allow for statewide mobile and retail sports wagering at tribal casinos and horse tracks. It also allows the card rooms to keep player bank games, which many tribes believe are illegal. Should the bill make it to the Senate floor, it will require a two-thirds majority to pass before going to the House, where it will require the passage of another two-thirds majority vote, which then goes on a statewide ballot to be ratified or rejected by California voters on November 3rd, which just so happens to be a, a election day. So today's guests uh, are very familiar with this each, uh, issue. Uh, as the leader of Redding Rancheria, uh, Jack Potter's tribe runs a successful uh, moderate-sized casino up in Northern California. Jack, thank you so much for being here. Uh, yeah. Mark Macaro is the chairman of the Pechunga Benalu Senu Indians and has been a leader for his people for almost 25 years. Uh, Mark, welcome. Also, and in fair disclosure, let you know that Mark is the chairman of my tribe and my cousin. So, you know, if he starts yelling at me, <laughs> you'll understand why. Uh, and then last but definitely not least, we have James Siva. James is the chairman of the uh, CNIGA, the California Nations Indian Gaming Association, the largest tribal gaming organization in California. James, thank you so much for being here, my friend. Of course, thank uh, you for having so, me. So, you know, gentlemen, um, the reason we have this session, as we, we talked about earlier, it's, I thought it was very important that people hear from the tribal perspective. Uh, you know, one, one of the things that's that in the last 20 years that I've been doing a work in Pachanga.net, you see a a clear and very real um, um, deterioration of um, the media, newspapers, reporter, and journals. And so it's really hard for the tribes to get their message out. And, you know, at one time, that's all we used to do is rely on reporters and the media to get a message out. And now with a format like this, I think it's really important that, you know, we are now able to get our message out directly, unfiltered. And, uh, um, and that's exactly why we called this session. Um, so, first of all, uh, let's talk about, about this. James, let, let, me, let me go with you first. Can you give us a little background on uh, SEA6? Or mm -hmm. well, just, or just sports betting, man. Bring, bring everybody up to speed. Well, I mean, ever since the, uh, they reversed the, the decision on, um, around online gaming in general, the coming out of the Supreme Court, Everybody knew that sports wagering would be the next big issue in gaming. And you see various states starting from the East Coast, moving through the Midwest, start to legalize sports wagering in some way. And California being the biggest uh, gaming market in the country, um, the question had to come up when sports wagering would enter California. Um, but any expansion of gaming into California, that decision has to start with the tribes and so the tribes took that question on and we started to address it and um trying to figure out the best way to expand that section of gaming expand that class three uh issue of gaming but also do it in a way that was both fair and equitable to tribes in various geographical regions to tribes of various size 
Um, and so I think that led us to then um, the uh, tribal initiative that was uh, spearheaded um, by many tribes, but um, I'll point out Pachunga was one of the, the main tribes behind that um, coalition building initiative. Um, and so that was um, moving forward well. And then the pandemic hit, you know, COVID-19 kind of changed the landscape of everything, including that initiative, including the way people were looking at sports wagering. And coming off the hills of that, you now have SCA6, which personally I think is just um, just outrageous how they're using the pandemic as a justification to further break promises that have made the tribes and to further try to chip away at our sovereignty. Wow. Chairman, Chairman McCarl, can, can you elaborate on that some more? Uh, the timing part of this? Yeah, well, you I, know I what? I mean, do that. And, uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's, there's so many um, pieces here, you know, I mean, I, if, obviously in India country, nothing's ever linear, you know, there's never a straight path to success, there's never a straight oh, no. path to, to, to anything, you know, everything's always seems to be difficult. So, um, give us your perspective yeah. on this, sir. Okay, so um, I'll, I'll, I'll get, to, I'll end with the timing. Just want to say the big picture and the, and the long, the, the long view of this. Um, uh, S, SEA six is, you know, on its face is is about legalizing sports betting, but it also legalizes a lot of other things. Um, before we had uh, discussions and a dynamic regarding sports betting legalization in California. There was about a nine-year effort to legalize um, internet poker, which was almost successful. But um, I just want to use this opportunity to point out that both of these two efforts over the last 10 to 11 years were never really about internet poker uh, or uh, sports betting. They're really about uh, the online version of those things, that if, if the framework and the initial legalization of poker or sports betting isn't done, isn't one drafted by tribes or you know with tribes front and center, that tribal interests will not be taken into account. So that's that's really, uh, I think, what keeps us at the table is trying to make sure that tribal interests are are protected because, as we've seen here with SCA six, that is not the case, not the case happening at all. So, uh, Senate Constitutional Amendment six would seek to legalize sports betting. Uh, but it would also legalize a lot of the illegal card act, card room activities that are going on throughout the state. Card clubs are playing a version of blackjack in 21 currently <clears throat> that is prohibited by the state's constitution. And um, for about a decade, they have been allowed to get away with these things. So the bill that is a constitutional amendment would give tribes basically control over sports betting on its face but would also ask us to agree to legalizing uh, what the card clubs are currently doing right now. And um, that's, that's been very tough for us to, uh, to deal with. But even more importantly too, was the lack of any consultation that the bill's authors put forth. Um, uh, they did not consult with tribes. They did not ask tribal leaders, hey, what do you think of this draft? Now we knew they were gonna introduce a thing, you know, pretty much figured that out last year. Uh, and they did have a spot bill coming into this session. So, but here's here's the timing of things. SCA 6 began in earnest uh, during this pandemic, even though there was a spot bill, they filled in the bill with all the bill language and they, uh, they saw that, you know, people were having to shelter in place. We had just qualified our bill, our ballot measure uh, and our ballot language and we're already starting to gather a considerable number of signatures for a ballot measure to legalize sports betting based on a ballot initiative and a constitutional amendment that tribes wrote. Well, you know, that came to a screeching halt because everybody had to stay indoors, including uh, signature gatherers who couldn't stand in front of grocery stores and whatnot. So that's when the bill was introduced. And, uh, um, you know, we were about a half a million signatures short. And so, uh, that seemed like a good time, I guess, to the bill's authors to go ahead and, and proceed uh, while we were down on the map, so to speak. So, 
that that was that was really the sucker punch that I've spoke to uh, over the last few weeks. The sucker punch of timing, and uh, you know, it, we'll just deal with it, and uh, maybe we'll get to some of the nuts and bolts of this a little later. But uh, that, in a nutshell, is the big sweep of of what's at play. But you're right about it's not linear. There are several things going on all at once, and it, it is multi-layer. You know, uh, Chairman Potter. You Thank know you. your your path to success was never guaranteed nor linear too. You know, I remember, you know, when you made your announcement that you're going to open your casino, you know, you guys got the whole world came down on you. You guys were, you know, you persevered, you went through lawsuits again and again, it was never ending. And then, you know, you open your casino and, you know, and then you have to shut it down again. What, what, how does this make your tribe feel? And, you know, were you surprised also? Um, and when I say about you feel, you know, now you're in a position of, of, you know, where you guys just start getting your feet underneath you, you just start again. And then you, you know, like Chairman says, you know, you guys get sucker punched by this uh, pandemic and you guys have to shut down your facility. Um, now, what does sports betting mean for you? What does tribal unity mean for you in this situation? Andrea is always about tribal unity, even if in the end we may benefit because we are unique. Northern California tribes, north of Sacramento, you know, come from small uh, rural areas, even though we're in Redding and we have 98,000 people, it's still small compared to from Sacramento down. And so, you know, if this was to pass, the tribe would benefit in a way, but then it's not fair to the Southern California tribes because they're the ones that have all these major card rooms within their backyards and where the tribes were not consulted, you know, or even brought to the table to ask how this will affect them or anything because there is obligations by the state. You know, we've got to start with the tribal nations first because we are leaders in gaming in the state you know we have a small card room right here in Reading that has 221 tables and they're always talking that they're the only uh legitimate casino in town and everything when we've been in operation 27 years they still say we're operating illegally and everything but i think like what chairman mccarrow was saying they took advantage of the pandemic you know where we weren't able to get out there and gather the things that are necessary because even if it does benefit us we support all the tribes in California. And if it's not good for one tribe, it's not good for no tribe. And so, you know, you know. It's, it's, it's always, I don't find it fascinating whenever the tribes stand on principle, it always seems to shock people. You know what I mean? That the tribes, I mean, not that we're in a society of people that don't have principles, but we seem, you know, to to stand on them a lot firmer than most people. I, I, I'm not sure if this is a phenomenon to Indian country. It's just part of this culture that we live in. You know what I mean? There's a cost to everything. And then when the tribes say, no, no, there isn't a cost. There's there's something deeper and more meaningful here, like tribal sovereignty. And, you know, it's, it's, it's still a wonder to me to, to this day that people still don't understand where the tribes come from or why they stand on principle. Um, uh, Chairman Siva, can you, uh, so how was the signature gathering before? You know, Chairman McCarl talked about it. Chairman, he talks about um, um, where was Sinaiga's um, um, position in all this? And what are you hearing uh, from your tribes, your members? Sinaiga um, has taken a stance of full support behind the tribal initiative. Um, and we had to go so far as to amend um, a previous um, stance we had taken in our bylaws, which stated that Sinaga was opposed to any expansion of gaming in California. But after realizing the language in the tribal initiative, the number of tribes who were in support of it, um, Sinaga changed their position and came in uh, full support and um, was voted on at our um, Sinaga membership meeting at our annual conference, and it was voted on um, and passed uh, unanimously. So all 35 of our member tribes um, are fully supportive of um, the tribal initiative. And um, we believe that 
tribes have to be in control of any expansion of gaming. And the tribal initiative, I believe, is the best vehicle to make sure that our future is uh, best looked out for. Uh, Chairman McCrow, um so, you know, after watching, you know, after, after being a, a part of this now, we're talking about like 12 years that you said, you know, um, I think what was interesting about when this bill was dropped on us was the, um, the the people on the other side or the companies on the other side pushing this. So all of a sudden you have the sports league coming in, you have a lot of online gaming people coming in and, you know, tribal gaming has been uh, the only thing that has ever worked uh, in Indian country as, as, as to elevate our people out of abject poverty to, for our, our families, our mothers and our children's and our grandmothers. Um, were you surprised at, at, at the, the, this bill at the time that they dropped? You know, we've, I thought we've, um, have been very good partners. We've, we've said everything that we've said we were going to do. When we went to the people of California 22 years ago, you said, trust us, we will elevate ourselves and we will help our, our, our fellow tribes. Can you tell me in, 22, in the last 22 years after keeping our promises and doing, were you surprised at, the, at this level of, of you know, um, I don't want to say disrespect, but just, uh, you know, brazenness almost, you know? You know, I, I do have to say no. Um, and I'll, and here's why it's a qualified answer. The uh, let me start with the the passage of uh, of Prop Five in 1998. Uh, in 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 the I think the two days or so after that that huge victory, uh, the first passage of our ballot proposition uh, to legalize really our compacts and and our and establish our right to game in California because previous Governor Pete Wilson didn't want to sign compacts with tribes. Uh, Gray Davis, his successor, finally did. Um, having won that ballot measure, that campaign, and, and with an overwhelming victory, I think it was 63% uh, of the voters, um, we had, a, a, a at the time, a, a politico of the state, uh, lieutenant governor. He gathered about two dozen tribal leaders into uh, his office in the state capitol to congratulate us, you know, and bask in the, in the wind. And, uh, but he, he said this phrase to us, he says, now, he says, you've won a, a very important, convincing and overwhelming victory. He says, you have taken political power away from a bunch of people. He says, so be on guard because they're gonna want it back. They're gonna want it back. And you're gonna have to do whatever you need to do to protect it. Now, I, I think various tribal leaders have over the years responded to that differently, but, it was insightful because for tribes, it's never been about political power. It's been about, you know, we have, like you said, gaming for the first thing, the first time that has ever, ever worked for tribes. And suddenly we are, uh, you know, we're faced with one challenge after another. People want a piece of it. They want to do other things. And it's just, a, uh, it's just something that really has, uh, it never goes away. So, you know, I think that uh, back into the present now, this, it wasn't a surprise because um, there are 24 states, I believe, right now that have uh, that have sports betting legalized in their jurisdictions. Um, several tribes in those states as well. Uh, because of California's population, however, California is the largest potential single jurisdiction in the United States by market size. Potential. So, you know, 40 million people in California. And so it, it isn't a surprise that this that there are those partisans within the state that would seek to legalize this on their terms. And sure, tribes, you can sit at the table too. Um, and then, of course, sports betting, I guess, is, is potentially bigger than, than internet poker was. Poker has, has seemed to wane and, and, and ebb and flow, I'll say, in, in terms of popularity over the years. Um, and it spends a lot of time on, on the uh, ebb side <laughs> rather than the flow side, like it is right now. But uh, sports betting is a different creature uh, because it taps into, I think, I think it taps into a social uh, part of the social fabric, uh, uh, the culture of you know of American of people. You know, we have all kinds of people that love sports. They love betting on sports. 
They grow up betting on sports and it feels normal. So the big concern really is that uh, that if, if sports betting were to be legalized in California, it needs to be tribally driven, it needs to be tribally centric, and um, it needs to not be online. Uh, because how once we once a game goes online, whether it's sports betting, bingo, pick your pick your game. Um, that's the camel's nose under the tent. Our brick and mortar facilities have allowed us to provide for our people, give us a measure of self-reliance, provide employment, all kinds of programs, uh, health care for elders and, and school programs across the board. It's just been a tremendous boom. But um, the for-profit side of this whole thing is, is just driven by a bottom line. And they're very, there are sports leagues that, of course, are helping drive this, all the major sports leagues. You've got the broadcasting companies as well. So um, it's really, it, there are so many forces in play that are pushing this along. So it really seemed as a protective measure, but also a proactive one to put forth a ballot measure that would allow us to, uh, to establish the terms for how sports betting should be done in brick and mortar and not online. And that's what the ballot measure was about. And I, I won't speak of it, I, I shouldn't speak of it in past tense, by the way. But, uh, well, you, you know, know, you know, you you're trying to keep you it know, alive, too, by the way. You, so. you bring up a really good question and a, a really good point, which is, you know, I, I, I always have to go back to, to, to and, 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 you know, and the thing that always I think annoys a lot of people about Native Americans is that, you know, we see America, we see our history very linear. You know what I mean? And the past is not the past. You know what I mean? I always tell people, you can always tell a Native American by, because they always know who their grandma was pissed off at. You know what I mean? And it's a very Native American thing to know what your family has done, you know, generations back. And, and you know, I know there's a lot of families that are, are like that, but it, for me, it's a very unique uh, 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 aspect of Native American culture is that the past is never really the past. You know what I mean? It's right there and it guides you in the future. Um, yeah. You know, so. <laughs> your grandma and, and, and is my dad's sister, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, and, and I think a lot of the dominant culture doesn't understand why the, you know, that you always go, why don't those Indians just take it? You know, why don't they just do online gaming? Why don't they just do poker? You know what I mean? And some of it's very patriarchal too, but you know, I'm always reminded of the, uh, uh, the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851, which is, you know, where, where they told the, the tribes of, uh, uh, of South Dakota, you know, the Lakota and the Dakota, uh, Dakota, that you know this land is yours till time immemorial but you know they didn't read the fine print or when gold is found you know what i mean and that's the same thing with tribal gaming you know it's fine if it's all this until gold is found and now to me they're like going, oh wow this is our opportunity to get into online gaming to open it up to sports betting and stuff like that uh chairman uh chairman potter yeah. Um, what what would what what would this mean for for your you know you run a smaller casino, um, you know you guys have spent all this money you know when you moved into your facility uh, not too long ago and again that's what I was talking about you know you guys were just like they tried to stop you every single step of the way, and again they don't have the historical context to understand where you guys have been from and where you're going, and now and under that you know what is sports betting mean for a smaller tribe like yours you know. Well, there's a lot of unanswered questions, and like you guys are talking about your grandmothers, you know, my grandma always said, be careful when they want to join you and put things on the table and want to give things away so easily. And so it makes us, you know, take a few steps back and wonder, you know, we know what we had to do to get to where we are today. Prop 5, Prop 1A, and all this, all the money the tribes had to put together when we were just barely making money and you know we believed in ourselves that we knew we were doing the right thing and so we all came together and got it passed got us to where we are and so now for that other side to just want to offer up the stuff roulette the uh sports betting and other things makes you wonder what's behind it what's behind it is because they want to legalize their illegal operations and they think that indians are foolish enough to grasp at anything and uh, 
you know, we don't know what it means for our compacts. They may want to tax it at 10% what they're saying, but then what's that mean to the tribe? That percent, tribes may not be able to afford. And, you know, when we have to renegotiate it, they may say it's not a tax, but we know they go around in a roundabout way and it's a tax. And it may be something that the smaller tribes can't afford, but they think they're de being nice by offering this up here, tribal people here. We see you guys are into gaming. Here's these other avenues. But really in the end, it's just to get their doors open. And we know they own the land downtown that they said tribes had to stay on their reservations. Tribes had to stay where we were put, but they own down in the city where if they get successful and open up their casinos, because once they get these games approved, they're just gonna get slot machines. Then they're gonna get this, then they're gonna get that and open it all up. And where our tribe's gonna be, we're gonna be still out in the sticks where we were put originally because that was garbage land, but we were successful in it, but we're not gonna be right downtown. And people are gonna say, well, it's easier to go right next door instead of traveling 30 miles out to the reservation. So yes. Jackie, do, do you think they used the Indian accent when they did it? We give them you compact and sports betting too. Is it that, that patronizing, do you think? I, I believe it is. And you know, yeah. that's what I think so too. I think it's a, well, you know what? And let's talk about this deal. You know, what was amazing was, was when it was offered. I mean, it was like, here's everything you want. You know, uh, the card clubs don't get sports betting. You guys get mobile. You guys get exclusivity. So on the surface, it seems like everything that we want. You know, what what what's the rub here? Uh, uh, James, go ahead, take this. <clears throat> I think the rub is that they've already shown that they don't respect our exclusivity. Look at what they've allowed the card clubs to do for the last yeah. two decades. Right. So what what does their exclu exclusivity actually mean? They give us sports betting, but like Chairman Potter said the card clubs could take this and then they have some form of slot machines that aren't technically class three gaming, but to use Chairman Macaro's metaphor, it's the camel's nose under the tent. And then right. it starts there and then it moves into sports betting and they've shown that whatever they deem as exclusivity to tribes is not actually true. Well, you know, there was, there was a recent ruling in Minnesota um, a couple weeks ago talking about um, pull tabs. And the Shakopee sued the state, saying that this is an expansion of gambling, and uh, uh, and it's um, you know they're doing electronic pool tabs and kind of you know you've seen this game plan before, which is what happened with Class Two with tribes, and so and the court had the same ruling, saying you know the technology, uh, though the technology has changed, it's still on its principle, it's still a, a charity game, and it's still Class One or Class Two, whichever whatever pool tabs are. And that seems to be the same strategy too, you know what I mean, which is, um, you know, here's a little something, but it, they're always a little surprised when, when, when the tribes stand on principle. Um, so, um, so what, what is, now uh, Chairman McCarl, you mentioned um, uh, about the referendum. Can you give us a little bit of information about what happened to the referendum, where we were and then where it is right now? I know it was, uh, uh, you made an announcement during the pandemic after you closed the casino, the whole world was stopping and obviously you guys stopped too. So can you give us a little information about the status of that? Of, of that? Yeah, I, I found my mute button. So I, I <laughs> want to make sure I, I pressed it again. Came off the mute. <laughs> um, so uh, the, uh, okay, there, the initial qualification for uh, uh, language to be put on the ballot was in November, and then um, probably the 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 date, the hard date that uh, the ballot measures will live and by uh, live and die by is June 25th, which is I think that's next week. Um, and so uh, every, every a ballot measure needs to have enough qualifying signatures um, to uh, uh, to to actually get onto the ballot. And so, um, you know what, I was just thinking here, I, I don't actually know what that number is. And uh, maybe somebody will shoot me a text in real time and tell me what that is. But, uh, uh, and so we need to, at, at the time the pandemic hit, well, we had something uh, uh, something above 900,000 signatures. We were about half a million uh, signatures away uh, or so from uh, the amount of signatures you need because 
I think you need to gather, uh, and there's a formula for this, um, but you need to gather quite a bit more signatures than you need because uh, they go through, they check them. Um, you know, some people are, they use deceased or, or fictional information and, and some aren't registered to vote. And, and so uh, they weed all the names down. So you end up with a valid net number. And, uh, and so that's what we were in the middle of doing. Um, we were getting close. And so uh, we have now petitioned the state, that we the campaign has petitioned the state, uh, the Secretary of State to um, uh, grant us more time to gather those signatures because of the COVID-19 circumstance and pandemic uh, that basically you know, imposed a shelter in place uh, order on the population of California during the time of the signature gathering. So um, don't know how that's gonna go, but uh, uh, I, and, you know, I think we're still now trying to prop, uh, uh, get the signature gathering process up and running anyway to use, make the best use of the time that we do have uh, the remaining week and a half or so. But uh, that, that's where we are in terms of the mechanics. Uh, now, I also understand that if we do qualify uh, the signatures, we will have, I think, the measure qualified for uh, November 2022 uh, rather than November 2020. The proposed ballot measure that's in place right now uh, by the legislature, not in place, that is moving in draft form in the legislature right now, SCA 6, Senate Constitutional Amendment 6. Um, that, that, if it does get voted out and to be placed on the ballot, um, it would be this November 2020. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, so many things that, that could happen, you know, they could be hindered as well. The elections could be hindered by um, a, a, another wave or another spike of, uh, of COVID-19. So lots of variables in play right now. You know, it, it um, thank you very much, Chairman. You know, it, 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 um, it makes the summer interesting, you know what I mean? It's definitely, you know, we, ha we have the presidential election, um, um coming up and i think that's really important um in getting the voters and driving the voters out and stuff like that um you know has um so has this really been as one way as it sounds has it been you know there was no consultation and now the bill is being um um it's in this it's on suspense for the in in the and the uh senate right the state senate sorry I get my notes right here yeah um okay. Senate Appropriations Committee, sorry. Um, so, so where where are we, and what's and what's going forward? You know, I think everybody wants to know. You know, what is this summer going to be like? Now, you know, I guess we can kind of speculate, and you know, I, I think with all the tribes on the same page, and as somebody who's been around for quite a while, and I'm sure all of us, uh, uh, you know, I think James was talking about uh, when we were talking about when Prop Five was passed, he was still a young man. And, uh, and you know, a lot of people don't remember that. And, 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 and to me, it's so indelible and because obviously it was very life changing for me and for my family. And, and uh, but I've seen what it looks like when the tribes are uniform. And right now, you know, pretty much it's it's everyone's on the same page, which is pretty impressive and stuff like that. So what 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 are we going to look for now? So right now we have tomorrow we have this vote um you know i don't think it's fair to speculate i think there is a lot of concern what what, what do you think chairman what what are, what are you seeing uh chairman mccarl what do you what are you seeing what do you what do you think uh, help our audience understand well okay so the bill was introduced initially um in the senate uh government organization committee senate geo and uh, uh the chair of that committee um as, as I think all of us have said, uh, without consultation, introduced this bill. Uh, he also did it in, consulta in consultation with his colleague in the, in the other house, uh, the chair of the assembly geo committee. Uh, and, and so uh, anyhow, the, the bill passed uh, by evidently one vote and in, in, in Senate geo, which moved it to appropriations. I mean, what are the fiscal impacts on the state or benefits on the state? And um, it, it passed there as well. Um, I mean, these are these are somewhat close votes. I mean, we have our supporters who've been speaking up strongly for us as well. Um, but uh, it, it it went on suspense. It's been held. Um, 
and it could be pulled back into action, uh, my layman's term, uh, back into action by the, the chair of the committee, um, and or or not, you know, it could it could stay on suspense, um, because even the legislators, I mean, they think they have a schedule right now for meeting. You know, they're conducting uh, their legislative sessions uh, kind of in a hybrid fashion. Uh, some are present. Uh, the uh, some of the presenters or the petitioners or the um, witnesses on a bill are, are you know queued in remotely like we're doing here, and uh, and then you know. People who get to who want to speak up normally at a hearing would come up to the mic and have their one minute. You know they have to do that remotely too. So uh, it's it's a little cumbersome, and I think it kind of my point in mentioning all this is it stretches out. It feels like it stretches out the timeline for each hearing, and um, you know so things on just because of process because of COVID nineteen they might not have enough time to finish this process. Uh, would pray that that's exactly what happened. But, you know, they're concerned. They have the, the head of steam going right now. Um, they, 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 the legislators. And so, um, you know, they even introduced an, an amendment to the uh, initial SCA 6 bill, um, which was released yesterday. And um, it, it, it's, you've heard the expression lipstick on a pig. This put, this adds the <laughs> mascara on the same pig. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it, and it, it, just, it just got worse is what happens you know so um you know it, it talks about enforcement language which is which is really uh, enforcing the games that the card clubs will play but after they get to legalize the illegal things they're doing now um you know the notion of, of legalizing uh, the unlawful co uh, conduct of card clubs uh, is really an absolute non-starter for, for many of us tribes, or I think all of us. Um, so, you know, we, we just don't want to see our rights abrogated. And, and, and you know, we're, we're going to work as hard as we can to uh, prevent the bill from seeing the light of day, hopefully. Now, I think we, another thing that's driving, I do want to mention uh, uh, one metric, and people get bored with statistics, but, um, you know, as part of a campaign, you know, every campaign, by the way, should know uh, what it's, what its uh, relative measure of success could be uh, for in, in the actual vote. When we've tested, and I say we, the campaign, have tested sports betting among voters, likely voters in November, um, it polls 33%. 33% of this state uh, would be okay or good with seeing sports betting legalized in California. Um, that percentage, that, of that favor, that win for that, for sports betting, which is you know dismal, it starts to drop when you talk about online sports betting. And my point here is that um, I think the legislators uh, are way out of sync with the voters of the state right now. Uh, we understand they have their own internal poll that shows sports betting at about 44%, about 10 points higher. We think they probably haven't done quite the due diligence in the research that the tribal side has done which is usually the case, we usually drill down. I mean, we've done campaigns for years. So um, we, we ask tough questions. We don't want to be biased. And so even at 44%, I mean, if somebody says, you know, we're going to launch you, uh, run, run you a, a campaign for Congress, but and you have a 44% chance of winning, I don't know. That doesn't sound like a good place to start, right? You want to start above 50% on a win. So. You know, if they are able to to, to get this SCA 6 with whatever language they have in it uh, to the floor of the Senate, you know, the, they have to do the same thing then in the House, um, not, not the House, that's federal, that's Congress, in the Assembly. And then um, to, clear, to clear each floor, uh, it has to be a two-thirds vote. And then that's what places it on the ballot. The governor really doesn't have a, any action or say so on this. It's an act of the legislature to legislatively put a measure on the ballot. So that, you know, that could happen. If it does, I mean, the chances of success at, based on our polling, 33%. Uh, based on theirs, 44%. So uh, worst case scenario, uh, I, I even in that, in that instance, I kind of like our chances that I don't think their bill has written uh, with all the fatal flaws that it has in there, all the things that voters don't support, um, I don't think that that would have a very a good chance of succeeding in the fall. 
Well, you know, you know what, uh, Chairman, you know what, the, the interesting thing is, you know, the governor just announced his budget and COVID-19 has blown a big hole in, in the California budget. So that seems to be part of the strategy that they're using is that, you know, this is money that goes to the California bottom line, uh, just like lotteries supposed to go to the bottom line. You know, the legislature has a, a, a tendency to say one thing and do another, especially when it comes to money. Um, you know, now, you, you know, uh, one one component though, I, I, I remember when you, were, that we were talking about the, uh, the tribal sports bidding they were talking about doing retail sports bidding and maybe mobile coming on later on down the road is that still a possibility is, is that on the table no not on the tribal initiative at all we're i mean it's just look the concept this is the basic bare bones concept is for sports betting to we feel i think tribes for sports betting to to, to work we've had to take these baby steps in terms of the legalization and so the first step would be, what does legalization of sports betting look like? The answer is brick and mortar only. Um, never mind what the other states are doing. And the reason for that, well, there's now actually two. I introduced the other one already. But the main reason is the tribal reason is we cannot risk the unknown with our brick and mortar of putting a, a brand new legalized uh, game online. You know, that's then, then what's after that? Poker and then bingo and then slot machines on your phone at home. Um, why go to a casino? Right, yeah. right. Well, yeah. that's actually, Chairman, that seems to be the strategy. I mean, the whole point is, you know, with the pandemic, everybody wants to, you know, why, why grocery shop when they can deliver it to your door? Why go to the movies when you can get it on your phone? So, you know, this new society of ease of access, this seems to play in, in into that. I'll, I'll just say that, that this COVID period has, has, I think, shown some of the value of doing things online, but it's also shown some of the limitations and the tolerance that people have for being, uh, for, for doing things strictly online. And I think if you talk to, to Chairman Siva and Chairman Potter about how, how their reopenings have gone, you know, the enthusiasm and the appreciation for our doors reopening, uh, as they finally did, has been tremendous. And, you know, it's people crave the social interaction. They, they, they miss the social interaction, you know, human to human. So, and, and, and our, our, our venues give them that opportunity. And for you know, us, I, I, it's the lifeblood that we need for uh, maintaining um, our community's health. Right. Uh, you know, I have a question from, from one of our audiences. They are, what are the implications for the rest of Indian country by the outcome of this legislation? I think this is a really good uh, a question, and, and, and I, I think I'd like to jump in there too at the end. But question goes for you: What what is the implication? You know, what is the you know from on the very surface you have the tribes are saying you know one thing, you have the legislature doing another, and you have a clash. So what what is the implication for Indian country? Well, okay, I'll take a stab and then let these guys uh, either correct me or, or chime in. Um, but look. Being, I, I think, having a tribally driven uh, legalization effort, whether it was in internet poker or, or sports betting, such as it is right now, uh, it's fundamentally important that, that tribes be uh, in charge of writing the language, uh, because we know best how to protect ourselves and how to advocate for ourselves and our interests. So, number one, but um, I, we really, we really do have to be careful because the law game is is the is um online gaming and i think most of us probably took the position that uh that the, that legalization of sports betting was going to happen with or without us whether we were at the table or not right and so it was better i think to be out in front of the thing be out in front of the legalization effort rather than waiting sitting back and waiting for it to happen because then it would be too late and so you know, that's that's really that's something that I believe has every tribe's interest uh, wrapped up in that. And then um, uh, when you start to think of the implications, okay, uh, what if this is done without you at the table, without tribes at the table, and then uh, it goes to to an online version of this? Um, who benefits from that, and and at whose expense? And uh, that's a risk right now. That uh, the answer to that question, I think. 
we also need to be part of. So if legalization is going to occur in California, tribes need to be part of that or a big part of that equation. And then we can talk about uh, sometime after that, what what does online look like? Because that's that's the really fundamental, that's what this whole thing is all about, is is the online version of anything uh, and it, and how an online version of anything is a detriment to our brick and mortar. So, you know, I, I, I know the people in the industry, you know, they don't want to hear that the, the, the tribes are potentially talking about, you know, if at all, uh, if at all, mobile gaming of sports betting, uh, that it's two, three, five years out, you know, I'm sure heads are exploding right now, but you know what? You're not us. You're not, you don't have our history. You don't have at stake uh, the, the 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 continuity of people that go back thousands of years and are just trying to survive. So there's a whole different calculation here to be made. Anyway, Chairman Steven. Yeah, I I agree with um, with most of what Chairman Macaro said, and the I think the the effect that this could potentially have on Indian country and the overall tribal government gaming industry is if this kind of bill is able to be introduced without tribal input, be able to be pushed forward onto a ballot, voted on, it's gonna show that other other states outside of California that they could take the same kind of paternalistic view of tribes, that they understand what's best for our needs. Even though we have shown again and again, we understand the best way to take care of our people. The, I mean, we don't need to go through a history lesson here, but the federal government, the federal government has never done tribes any favors. The state of California has never done tribes any favors. So we have to be the ones to take care of our own people. And the gaming industry has been one of the biggest landfalls for tribes. And so to have the kind of control and the expansion of any kind of future gaming dictated to us is just unacceptable. And so we need to be able to control the narrative and shape how that context looks. And whether ga online gaming is three years down the line, five years down the line, if it's 10 years down the line, or if it's not even in the conversation, whatever that looks like, it needs to be a tribal decision. And I know with, I mean, the advancements of technology and the, every, everything's moving towards online. I mean, we were, we were talking about that briefly with the pandemic, with grocery shopping and things like that. But there are always going to be that need for human connection, that social interaction. And you're never going to be able to produce that over a computer, produce that over a smartphone, produce that online. And so that, I think that, importance of human interaction is going to be what drives tribes need to keep this in brick and mortar and to just have control over our own destiny or control over what any kind of online expansion looks like you know you know jack uh, chairman potter you know the history of california is uh these tales again of 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 the tribes getting the short end of the stick, you know, and, and recently you, you see the um, um, the zeitgeist, you know, the change in, in, in society. People are try, tired of being treated like less than human, you know, and, uh, you know, the other day they pulled down uh, the Sutter uh, statue in Sacramento, you know, and for some people, you know, they look at these statues and it reminds them of their history and it does the same thing for us but you know how is the the, the manifest destiny of sports betting any different than the manifest destiny of land you know it just feels like the same type of patronizing patriarchal approach to the tribes you know you guys are children of god you're simple we'll take care of it you're not smart enough to understand and yet here we are running campaigns winning 63% of the vote, uh, $34 billion industry, successful, hundreds of thousands of people employed. And yet, you know, they're still trying to tell us what is best for us. You know, I think, you know, I think in, for us, Chairman Potter at Pechanga, 
the history is never in the past, you know, and it's not not even history, I think, to paraphrase, you know, and the same thing, you know, the history of Northern California's tribes is this very tragic, but on one side it's tragic, but on the other side, it's also very noble and it's about survival. And, you know, again, I, I refer to when you open your casino up, this last one, just the amount of of vitriol and opposition you had and yet you guys didn't stop and now you guys are like you know this 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 shining uh uh light in a community that provides jobs and 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 employment in an area that is has a dearth of employment you know so you know what what does what is this bill going to mean to your people if if it passes and what does it mean for the rest of indian country if it passes you know, like I said earlier, you know, we'll probably have a lot of questions that are answered. What's the state going to be charging the tribes now? Because what, what are they going to want out of it? Because we all know they want something in the end. They're not going to just give something over so easy, you know. And it makes me think that, you know, because we know from our past, the people we dealt with. And we're dealing with their descendants today. Sure are, buddy. And we were raised in our households with our past. So what makes us not think they weren't raised with their past? They're the same people that took our heads, that committed those genocides, that committed the massacres. They're just doing it in a different way. One day, they're going to see the Indians have enough. And I believe we're getting to that point because I hear it up here when we're trying to do our expansion. We have been good neighbors. We've given to the community millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. We've provided needed jobs. We're good paying. Uh, all of our jobs are good paying. The 401k, all of that. But now they're saying, why don't you stay where you were put? You don't need to expand over here. You don't need to get any bigger. So, you know, when I hear that, I know they are the descendants of the people that took my people's heads. And it, it makes me think that, you know, we could hope that there's change, but we know as natives, we're only going to be allowed to go so far, you know, and they're going to try to stop us. And, you know, they may try to do it in a roundabout way by making this bill seem like it's beneficial to the tribes for the native people. But like I said earlier, in the end, it benefits them because it's going to allow them to operate their illegal operations and everything. And uh, that's what they want. They never believed we had the Indian relocation program. We had this program, this program, all those programs to the BIA. And the Native American, I will be honest, was not successful at none of that. But they were very successful at gaming. You know, they understood it. They got it. We may do with what pieces of land we had. We got loans did what we had to do and we are very successful at it. They did not believe we would be successful at it based on our past, uh, you know, programs that was to put us in the mainstream of society. We're large political players. We're some of the largest employers in our counties now. And they don't want that because they still look at us as we are less than them. They look at us like we're still those dirty Indians just taking handouts. And they don't like the fact, I believe, that we have made it. We are successful, but yet we're still Native in the end because we still hold our ceremonies, we still know our past, and we still live the way the Creator intended us to live. By providing for the land, we haven't assimilated, and it bothers them. Right. And, you know, we're going to be the way we are forever. Well, you know, you know, um, I think one one of the things that people need to understand is that, and part part of one of the message that I wanted to get across in in today's webcast, is that, you know, the tribes are are interested in sports betting. You know, it is an amenity uh, in, in our casinos that our customers want. It's just, you know, we're not willing to sell out everything that we've built so far for sports betting. Um, we, it's a very important component and, you know, we understand the leagues, oh, am I losing out? We understand the leagues are desperate for money and the state's desperate for money. It's just the tribes, you know, gaming is the only thing that has ever worked. And for us, it's very important that 
uh, we make sure the opportunity that we've created for ourselves is here for our children. Um, you know, we're very close to the end of this program. I have another one more question and people want to know how can they, the people not living in California help the tribes? How can uh, the people living in California help the tribes? How can our friends help us? That it must be within our established uh, buildings. That if they want this um, new mm -hmm. amenity, that it must take place within the walls of the existing casinos of the tribal nations and nowhere else. James, Chairman Siva. I would say support the tribal initiative. I know we're, we're trying to re-up the signature gathering effort. I would say to start there. And also if SCA6 is successful to get on the ballot, they can show support to tribes by voting no. Mm -hmm. Chairman McCarl, what, what would you say to the other tribes in California, our, our brothers and sisters in California, about uh, uh, the future of this uh, sports betting? About the future of sports betting? Um, you know, I think the, the sports betting and, and the, the, what's going on right now with SCA6 involves um, the interests of every tribe in the state for many of the reasons that we've talked about here. Um, so uh, I it would certainly. Uh, make an appeal to uh, any tribal any tribe and tribal leader that uh, that uh, would think otherwise that uh, we would be happy to share a, a, a discussion uh, and with you to you know to sit down and, and, and chart out the trajectories of what happens if sports betting is legalized uh, according to SCA 6 and, and exactly explain how that's going to be detrimental because um, this, the stakes really are high and, um, and and tribes will be on the short end of the stick here if uh, SCA 6 is allowed to see the light of day. So um, I think other, the, the flip side of that is that uh, you know, we need to be unified in, in opposing the passage of SCA 6 at every step in, in its process. You know, approach, the Senate approach hearing is again tomorrow, uh, the bill, the, I, the, the argument right now is the bill needs to stay on suspense. Let's keep it there. Um, let's just let it, you know, die a procedural death on hold, and uh, and and you know, maybe the legislature will engage tribes proactively before they put words to the page next year, and uh, if that's the case. Meanwhile, we need to continue uh, uh, supporting, as Chairman Siva said, uh, with uh, the, the tribal initiative. We really need to get that uh, that that underway. I think one of the reasons that the SCA 6 even did get introduced is I think the bill's authors thought that the uh, tribal initiative was dead because of the uh, shelter in place and the lack of uh, enough signatures having qualified the measure. Um, but, you know, I, I would I would love to prove them wrong. And I, I think uh, I, I would hope that all tribal leaders would will see that and that we can prove uh, these bill authors wrong and support this tribal measure. So happy well, to chat. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to point out to, to them that, you know, in, in Washington state, when the tribes and the legislature worked together, you know, they came up with a bill that was uh, um, uh, helpful to both and it passed and that's going to be enacted soon. And so, you know, we're not anti-sports betting. We're just anti being run over with disrespectfully, you know, by uh, this track. Exactly. You know, Absolutely. so we, we want it too. We just don't want to be disrespected or uh, don't be patronizing. You know what I mean? Let's do this right. Let's go to the table. Let's meet. And also, you know, interesting, uh, I see a lot of the model here is what I saw in Michigan, which is, you know, just rub, rub, you know, uh, rub, uh, shove it down the tribe's throats and then get bring them to the table later. So there's two models here. There's the Washington where they respect them. They both come to the table, or there's the Michigan where they just shove it down the tribe's throats. But you know, let me say that for there are plenty of tribes in Michigan that are happy to get sports betting and that are happy to be online gaming. So it's a very complex issue. There's not one side of it, but I know one thing here in California, we have uh, the tribes all standing on the same side right now. Uh, we had these amendments yesterday. It doesn't seem like they made anybody really happy, from what I can tell. And, uh, you know, I, I would like to thank uh, my guests, Chairman James Siever from CNIGA, uh, Chairman Jack Potter from uh, the great people of Redding Rancheria, uh, my dear cousin, uh, Mark McCarl, Chairman Mark McCarl from Pechanga, 
And, you know, I would like to have this conversation again a little bit down the road and let's see where the, where the progress is. Okay, so, and again, to all the people out there reading, you know, we're not anti-sports betting, you know, we, we are pro-sports betting, we're just anti being disrespected. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, and we will be back next week, be talking about uh, the long-term effects of COVID-19 on tribal economies. So thank you very much. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.